Hey guys, Mark Singh and here bringing you another Dragon Ball Z Dokkan battle video. And so today on our 200% leader skill showcase series, we are going to take a look at the Extreme AGL Great Ape Vegeta. So he was a unit that for a very long time uh, you would have hated to see in your summons. I mean, he's still not like super top tier, right? But his Easy A, uh, the global first Easy A for him and the Raditz and the Kid Goku, definitely made them very solid units. Now, this Vegeta, I have got him rainbow full level 10 links. He has big bad bosses, which is not a very common link for Vegeta units. So I've kind of made the team in a bit of a weird way here to see how many of his links we can actually get active from units that are in slot 3. So he raises his attack and defense for one turn on super, does supreme damage. And then his passive is attack and defense 80%, an additional 80% when performing a super, and then an additional attack 80% when HP is 80% or less. So obviously we want to aim for the turn where we can get on 80% or less HP. Um, I have brought some units like Kid Buu, because obviously Margin Vegeta's part of his leader skill is Margin Buu Saga. And Kid Buu is a support unit, but also has big bad bosses. Uh, this Vegeta has big bad bosses. He supports Extreme Int, which obviously he's not going to be supporting the Great Ape Vegeta, but he does have those good links with him. And then I brought this GT uh, Giant Ape Vegeta as well, because obviously he has some of the uh, Giant Ape links as well. So... Deliberately not going to get a super attack with Margin Vegeta here, just in case we get like a crit or something. Um, I don't know what dupe level the friend is, I just bought whichever one, I bought the recommended one from the game. So, turn 1, 300, uh, 300, uh, 3.2 million on his first attack stat. We get the crit. Um, with support on rotation from Xeno Vegeta, I didn't actually bring it up on the screen, but he starts off the turn. Um, at about 140k defense so he after supering is going to be close to if not over 300k defense which is obviously pretty good um all right let's see we're gonna let gt vegeta take some attacks here and i won't get too many orbs for the scout of vegeta because then Hopefully, what I'm hoping for is that we get a turn nice and early where one of these units takes a super attack and we can drop below 80% HP and then we can see this Vegeta with his full passive active. Obviously, the ideal turn is going to be with Kid Buu in slot 3 so that we not only have big bad bosses but also that 50% support that he gives. So yeah, there you go. There you go. There you go. GT Great 8 Vegeta takes uh, 160k. So now next turn... We are going to get the full attack buff. So I'm not sure what the next turn actually looks like in terms of the rotation. It is the one with Kid Buu. Let's go. Um, now we do get... Actually, the thing is, Kid Buu's support is uh, lowered when you're on certain HP, isn't it? So yes, yeah, 80% or above. So he's only going to be actually giving 30% support. But we are going to have big bad bosses. So we'll go ahead and use this so we can break out of the rotation locking. Um, the only problem is... Will Raditz... Actually, I guess we can do this, right? Because I don't want Raditz to get killed by Martian Vegeta. So we'll do this. So then Kid Buu doesn't kill him. So on this rotation, we have... Saiyan Warrior Race, Royal Lineage, and Big Bad Bosses. So start of the turn, we're at 152k. So with the 80% from his passive and the fact that he gets 30% on his super attack effect, then we should be over um, 300k defense after he supers. Now, obviously, Raditz is stunned, right? So it doesn't really matter. Wow, 5 mil. I mean, that's not bad. Um, 5 million attack stat, 300k defense after that super attack. So that is probably his best turn, right? Because the way his links and everything work, like getting him linked up with Kid Buu so that he has uh, big bad bosses, but then being below the 80% HP so he actually gets that extra attack buff means that we're then not going to be getting the 50% support from Kid Buu. So, obviously, it still works out being better to have the boost from Vegeta, right? Because he's getting an extra 80% attack. So, Kid Buu still giving him 30% support. And then Big Bad Bosses, which, of course, at level 10. Active. I mean, what is the actual requirement at level 1? Is it 80%? Because I guess he would have it active anyway. But still, Big Bad Bosses being active gives another 25%, which is very, very good. So, is a bit awkward for this Vegeta to have Big Bad Bosses. Just because, like I said at the beginning, there's not a huge amount of Vegeta units that have big bad bosses that then work really well with him. I mean, like, if he was extreme in, him and the in scout of Vegeta would obviously be crazy good together because not only do they have big bad bosses, but the scout of Vegeta would be giving him that 50% support, which would be really, really good. So we'll go ahead and do this. 
So we've got big bad bosses. We've also got Shattering the Limit, same Warrior Race and Royal Lineage. Uh, we've got 170k at the start of the turn. So, because we're getting the full support from Kid Boo. So post, def uh, post super attack, he is going to be looking at being close to, if not at, 300k, uh, close to 350 even defense, which is pretty good. So we'll go ahead and do this. He's not taking any attacks. Uh, Kid Moon's going to take some hits at the end, but we'll get super attacks for everyone. Uh, Scout of Vegeta got the type advantage. Goku's just going to dodge, apparently. But Scout of Vegeta got the type advantage, so he's not going to take like, big damage. And then we get a 4.1. So 4.1 million on the turn where we don't get the extra 80% from his uh, passive. But, like I said, we are close to like 350k defense. So that is still, obviously, a very solid turn for him. The only problem is, I guess, like, you know, what are the stages, what are the events where you're going to run him? Because on this Vegeta family team, you know, it's kind of fun to show him off in this scenario with, like, the showcase. But, like, this kind of team I probably would not bring into, like, the Vegeta event or something, right? We just kind of brought some of these units so we could actually get his links to activate. So, it's interesting to see him putting out these kind of numbers. But he really does need a new, like, a better sort of top tier linking partner. Like, if we ever get a future, like, Great Ape King Vegeta or something like that. Um, maybe an actual, like, summonable uh, GT Great Ape Vegeta. Because this one, it's free-to-play unit. It's not terrible. Obviously, the 200% team helps him out a little bit to not be uh, completely awful. But, again, he's not a unit that you're going to bring into super difficult content. And then, of course, on JP, there is the LR Great Ape Vegeta that released in the second part of the anniversary. But... I mean, they're basically the same unit, right? They have the same name. I think their link set is almost exactly the same, apart from the fact that obviously the LR will have legendary power, so one of his links will be slightly different. Um, go ahead and heal up here. We are getting all of the... Uh, get the orbs for both the Margin Vegetas. So only the Great Ape Vegeta in the middle is potentially going to take any damage here, so it should be okay. If we do take some damage from him, though, um, in fact, he should do pretty solid damage to Great Ape Vegeta in this middle slot. And then we can uh, get another turn with our Great Ape Vegeta actually under the 80% HP. Yeah, look at that, 80k. So yeah, perfect. We drop below 80% HP. And then Margin Vegeta got his six orbs, is super attacking first. So even though we don't have a Trunks on the team, uh, he will tag reasonably well, even if he takes a super, which he did not. So, perfect. So, we've got Xeno Vegeta on the rotation for support. We've got the Scout of Vegeta for Big Bad Bosses. So, actually, this probably could be his best turn, right? Because we've got Big Bad Bosses active. And then we've got the 40% from Xeno Vegeta, as opposed to the 30% we get from Kid Buu, if we're on low health on that turn. And we picked up a lot of orbs for uh, the Scout of Vegeta, so... His defense should be pretty decent, 200k. I think I'll top up that last little bit of uh, health just in case, right? Because we don't want uh, don't want him to get supered in slot one and die before we get to see what Vegeta can do. So Vegeta's at 166. So again, we're going to be at uh, 300k defense, maybe slightly over. Um, so he should be looking pretty good. 2.3 from the scout of Vegeta. I don't have any dupes in him. And he's going to take the super. So, yeah, 287k. It's quite a lot. And then 5.4 from the Great Eight Vegeta. So, that is definitely the highest that we're going to get out of him. But, yeah, tanking the normal attacks for double digits, which is what I would expect when his defense is that high. So, that is definitely pretty good. And then Xeno Vegeta, of course, is a uh, very, very good support unit. Definitely, uh, on the 200% team, he is actually pretty crazy. So... Uh, I think we will leave it there. We're at a very shoddy turn here anyway. But yeah, the AGL Great 8 Vegeta, definitely not a terrible card. Definitely not, like, the best card that we could bring on the team. Especially because of his sort of weird link situation. But definitely were able to get some impressive numbers out of him. Um, he'd probably do okay in, like, you know, one of the harder Infinite Dragon Ball history stages. But I definitely wouldn't be bringing him into the hardest events in the game. So let me know what you guys think of him down below in the comment section. So that is going to be it for the video, guys. This has been the Master Ningen. Smash that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. Check out the links down below for the Discord and the merch store. And I will see you all again soon. Have a good one.